Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy with the Blue Collar Builders channel here. Uh, this is the place where we talk about the state of the skilled trades and um, kind of what's going on in that world, in our world. And I um, wanted to just start by sharing a little bit of my story, my transition from uh, the classic white collar American dream to um, transitioning into a full on blue collar role. Uh, where I run heavy equipment and I work with my dad. So I um, wanted to just share my story with you as just kind of a start to this channel. Back in, uh, I don't know, maybe 2008, 2009, I was finishing up high school and um, had really fallen into just this ideology that I needed to go and I needed to get a college degree. And so at the time, um, I didn't have money, my parents hadn't saved money, and I was looking at what my options would be to take out loans, student loans, to afford uh, a four-year degree. So I did that, and you know, as an 18-year-old, 17, 18-year-old, um, had to make a decision of whether or not I wanted to take on you know, 30,000 plus dollars of debt to go to school. And for some people, that's good. I think that's a fair decision. There are certain careers that I think, obviously, you want your doctor going to school and getting trained, and you want, uh, you know, you want your accountant and your lawyer, like you want them to go to school, you want them to get trained. But for me, I went to school and I just kind of got a general business degree, um, and I was an okay student. I would say I was a B C average student. I was okay. I didn't get great t scores, and I honestly didn't love school, but. Like I said, I everyone was telling me, you know, you got to go to school, you got to get a degree. That's how you make a lot of money, and that's how you have flexibility over your life, and that's how you find ultimate happiness, which we could talk about a little bit more down the road. But uh, that's what I was told, and so I went to school four years, got a degree, and I left school with about thirty-five thousand dollars of debt, and I. I did that, but thankfully, thankfully, I ended up getting a white collar job where I would sit behind a computer at a cubicle and I could wear a, a suit and tie every day. And I remember the first day I walked in, I thought, I made it. I thought, man, this is, this is my happiness. This is it. Everything I've put in, all the things I've believed, everything everybody's told me is finally true. And I can now move forward with my life. Uh, and live this story that everybody's been telling me is so magical. And, um, you know, I, it didn't take long for me to realize that this, that was not what I actually wanted. About six months in, I really started feeling like, you know what, this is not the thing for me. I cannot sit, you know, I started having back problems because I was sitting all day. Um, I could not sit behind a computer the rest of my life. And, um, what felt like I just sit there and rot away. I just, I couldn't do that. And so, um, I muscled it out for about another year, maybe a year and a half. I think I was there in total. I was there for two years and, um, finally just hit a point where I started asking myself this question. I was like, I don't, I don't want to die doing this job. This isn't, I, I had, I had a feeling that this wasn't what I wanted to do. This wasn't what I was made to do. Um, and I will also say, you know, there are certain, certainly people that can do those types of jobs and they're built for that. They're made for that and they're amazing at it. And we need those people, but that wasn't me. I had fallen for the, the story and I just didn't fit the story. So I walked into my boss's office and I had a very open conversation with him where I just said, you know what? I appreciate everything you've done. You've given me a great opportunity. Um, this isn't you. It's like that when you break up with a, uh, with your boyfriend or girlfriend, you say, it's not you, it's me. That's exactly what this was. I said, it's not you, it's me. I just can't do this anymore. Um, I gave them a notice and I stopped, um, working behind a desk. And so that started the journey into entrepreneurship, which led me into a few, um, escape room businesses. So I, I opened a few escape room businesses in my town, um, ended up having a lot of, uh, great 
challenges and great experiences and lots of success and also some frustrations with that learned a lot but it was the first step towards all right I have to use my hands to build these things I have to use my mind to build processes and procedures and I have to manage people and if anybody if any of you have managed people you know that that's really difficult and um, especially in the business that I was in I was managing a lot of young people and so uh, there are all kinds of challenges when you have part-time young people and so this was a incredible change of uh, career for me that led to um, just incredible growth but also a realization that there was actual satisfaction behind uh, you know outside of sitting behind a desk working behind a computer and wearing a suit every day so I did that for a few years and um, opened a, another business it's an indoor nerf experience um, did that as kind of a little bit of a spinoff from the escape rooms and um, you know really found myself enjoying that all the while you know paying off my school loans at this point I think this has you know been five or six years at this point so in total about seven years eight years since graduating school and um, I still had you know 20 some odd thousand dollars of debt so this whole time I'm paying on them but barely getting anywhere with them and um, my dad actually uh, is a uh, excavator so he owns a excavating business and um, I'd started working with him a little bit just kind of advising and helping him on the business side and realized you know what this is uh, this is kind of a opportunity for me to potentially come work with him because we had some managers who were running the other businesses and um, my day-to-day -day was kind of available and so um, he asked if I wanted to come work with him I decided to, to go on and work with him and um, now I'm really in it now I'm really in the skilled trades I'm you know I'm in the the trenches shoveling gravel I'm in the uh, skid steer driving around grading and you know we've 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 done a lot of things which off the top of my head is really hard to list but I say all of those things to say that the evolution has taken time but it has been incredibly rewarding and I think about the kid that graduated from college showed up to work on his first day with his suit thinking that he had found his ultimate happiness believed everything everybody had told him to the kid or the man now I like to think that I've evolved into a man at some point uh, the man now who shows up on the job site and gets dirty um, and at the end of the day feels tired but is incredibly fulfilled and um, actually finding happiness. It's been an incredible journey for me and so I think my goal with this channel is to try to speak into uh, just some of the misconceptions or some of the realities of the skilled trades where they are in 2020 and how they will move forward into the 2020s. And the other thing is just kind of the lie that you have to follow a, a certain path to find happiness or to find success in your career. Sorry for the lighting there. Um, and so that's really what this channel is supposed to be is a place for you to find motivation for us to have conversations about things happening in the trades to find opportunities together to um i don't know make more money or find new opportunities and um, ultimately work together to build a community of folks who uh, are in the trades and um, want to find more success in the trades so we'll talk about more of the things opportunities more of the uh, things that I see moving forward with the trades as, as we put a few more videos out, but thank you for listening to this story. I look forward to sharing some of these ideas and some of these realities with you and uh, would love to hear your input as well. So comment below if you have any questions or if you have any thoughts, uh, would love to connect with you. Thanks.